Manufacturing a functional PCB has two separate steps. First, the factory has to fabricate the bare PCB, so just the board itself, with all the copper, silk screen, and drilled holes. Then, if you're also doing assembly, then they'll also solder on all of the components onto the board. And each of these two steps requires different manufacturing files. For the bare board fabrication, you'll need Gerber files, which define each physical layer of the PCB, and then drill files, which specify the location and size of all the holes for vias and mounting holes. Then for board assembly, you'll need pick and place files, which show the orientation and location of every component on the board, and as well as a bill of materials that list all of the components with their part numbers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to generate each of these manufacturing files step by step. OK, let's dive in. The first step is to generate the Gerber files. And, you know, Gerber files are just an industry standard for describing each layer of a PCB, including the copper traces, the solder mask, silk screen and board outline. And the name does not come from the baby food company. It comes from an old company called Gerber Systems that originally developed the format for photo plotting machines. So to generate Gerber files, we're going to go under File. We're going to go under Fabrication Outputs, and we're going to select Gerbers. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to specify the plot, the plot format is Gerber. We're going to select our directory where we want to save them. Got mine set to this Gerber directory. And now we want to select all the layers that we want to include. So this design is a four layer board. So I'm going to select our four layers with the front copper, inner one copper, inner two copper, and backside copper. Then we're also going to select the front and back uh, solder paste layers. Then we're going to also select the silk screen and then also the front and backside solder mask. And we want the edge cuts, which is the board outline. And then finally, we're going to select this front and back fab layers. So these first four are obvious. These are just the, the, the main uh, copper layers. The solder paste, it is part of the assembly process. So it's basically just an opening over each pad where they'll put solder paste that will then go through a reflow oven to solder the part, the part down. Silk screen is just all the various, uh, typically the text, you know, like J2, R1, the different uh, reference designators. Then we have the solder mask. And that's the, the green layer that you typically see on a PCB. You can get that in different colors than green, but green is the most common. So this basically uh, is, this layer is to, you don't want that solder mask, the green going over the pads that you have to solder to. So that's what this layer is going to do. It's going to keep the pads open. And the edge cuts I already mentioned is just the board outline. And then the fab layers, these can just be supplemental. You may not always have to include it. For instance, uh, this gray outline that shows where this connector is, that's on the fab layer. So you can include different things like that, maybe outlines for the parts, and that will be on the fab layer. Then we have this second column, which is layers that you want plotted on all layers. And the only one that I'm going to do this with, I like to do this on the edge cuts. And then that way, just every Gerber file layout also uh, includes the edge cut. OK, now we're going to move over here to some of these settings. Uh, we do not want to plot the drawing sheet. We don't care about force plotting of invisible values. This option here says indicate DNP, so that's do not place. So on the fab layers, these two layers here, if you have a component, let's just say S1 or the switch here, SW1, but you didn't actually want to populate, you didn't want that art soldered on that, then you could indicate that on the fab layer by either crossing it out or just hiding that uh, footprint altogether on the fabrication layer. So I'm going to leave this uh, selected. I'm going to do cross out, even though I don't have any do not populate parts. So it doesn't really apply to this particular design. Then the next option is sketch pads on fabrication layers. So this isn't absolutely essential, but I like to do it. It's just a little more information for the manufacturer. And it just basically all the pads will be sketched on the, the fabrication layers. 
And then it can also include the pad numbers, um, which can also just be beneficial to make sure they don't, you know, get the, the pins, the part oriented wrong so the pins don't match up. Drill marks, scaling, and plot mode, those are, there's no options for those, so you'll leave those alone. You'll want to select this, use drill place file origin. Also select that when we do the drill files in a moment. Then the other option you'll want to do is check zone fills before plotting. And a, a fill zone is, you know, like a copper plane, for instance. So what you'll want to make sure what you, you don't want to do is have that copper not filled, that copper zone or that copper fill, copper pour. It goes by lots of different names. You don't want to accidentally not have that filled because that's what will be fabricated. So this is just going to make sure that you've got all your your filled zones, copper pours, whatever you want to call it, that you've got all of those filled before you output your Gerber files. Then you've got some Gerber options, use ProTel file name extensions, no need for that, generate Gerber job file, uh, just leave that not selected. There's a subtract solder mask from silk screen. This is something that normally the fabrication house will do automatically, but you can also just have KiCad do it. Then we have our coordinate format. So we're going to do unit is millimeters and the 4.6 means four digits before the decimal point and six digits after the decimal point. So it's just basically how the four digits determines how big of a board you can do. And then the six digits on the right side of the decimal point determine, you know, how small of a feature. We're going to use the extended X2 format. And then we're going to also include the net list attributes. That's, it's not really required. This basically just allows you when you read the Gerber files, like look at the Gerber files in a Gerber viewer, that it allows you to, to check connectivity between uh, different parts of the design. And then this here is not recommended. We're going to leave that empty. Okay, so now we can plot our Gerber files. And I'm going to go into the Gerber directory. And you can see here are all the Gerber files that we got like the back copper. There's a fab layer, solder mask for the backside. Uh, silk screen for the backside, front copper, and our two inner layers of copper. So we have everything here. And let's just open these so you can see what they look like. And there, all they are is a, it's a text file, basically, with machine readable only, but it's a text file that's sent to the plotting machine. Okay, so now the next step is we're going to generate the drill files. We could do that from here, but I'm just going to go back and you can access everything under File Fabrication Outputs and we're going to do drill files. Whereas Gerber files describe the copper layers, the drill files are going to show where all of the various holes on the board are. So this will include any vias, as well as any through hole parts like this uh, power or this battery connector, as well as any mounting holes, like for instance, on this uh, USB connector. What we're going to do is I'm going to output those to the, the same Gerber file directory. I'm going to select the Excel on format which is just a cnc friendly drill format and i'm going to leave all of these empty the pth and npth so these are plated through holes and non-plated through holes so plated through holes are like any type of hole where you want you want it to be uh, you want connectivity through it so a via for instance so it's basically got copper in the hole to connect a trace on the one side of the board to the other side. The same with through holes here, they'll, they'll be plated so they'll have copper in the hole, but then mounting holes that don't conduct anything, then in that case, although these are actually grounded, so these are connected, but for some designs you'll have mounting holes that they don't need copper plating on the inside of the hole. So that's the difference in plated and non-plated. And typically you'll do these in two separate files. This is giving you the option you can combine them into a single file, but typically it's best to keep them as two separate files. And then we're going to once again select our origin is the drill place file origin, just like we did for the Gerbers. Millimeters is the units, and I'm going to do decimal format here. And now we'll just do generate. Now I'm going to go back here to our Gerber directory, and you can see we have two new files, or extension DRL for drill files. So we have our plated, which is going to be most of everything. You can see there's a, you know, a lot of holes for, for here and specified here. And what the drill file specifies is the location of each hole and then also the drill size for that hole. And then we have the non-plated, 
which doesn't really have a whole lot in it. But you can see it's, it's two separate files. And once again, it's just a, a text file. So if you're ordering bare printed circuit boards, then this is all you need. You need all the Gerber files and you need the drill files. But for this video, I'm assuming that you're also going to want the boards assembled. So basically meaning all the parts soldered onto the board instead of you having to do it by hand. So for doing board assembly with the manufacturer, we're going to need two more design files. The first is going to be what's commonly called just a pick and place file or just a position file. And what a pick and place or position file does, it tells the exact location of every component on the board and then the orientation of those components on the board. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go under File, Fabrication Outputs. This time I'm gonna select Component Placement. I'm gonna select our Gerber directory. We'll leave Format ASCII, Units Millimeters, and then I'm going to leave everything else empty. This is like, once again, you can exclude a footprint if it was a do not populate, but I don't have that for this design. Again, for all of these, we're going to use the drill place file origin, and then everything else is just uh, leave unselected. So we're going to generate position file. Okay, that's done. And now we'll have a position file POS extension. If you have components on the top and the bottom, in this case for this design, I only have parts on the top side. Once again, you can see it's just a text file, a little more readable in this case, almost looks a little bit like a BOM, but it gives you every component the X, Y coordinates and the orientation, and then also what side of the board they're on. Everything is on the top side. And here's the, the bottom size position, but it's just an empty file since I don't have any parts on the back side. So I didn't even really have to generate that file. And now the final file that we need for assembly is the bill of materials or just BOM or BOM. And KiCad has an option where you can output a bill of materials. So basically this just outputs a spreadsheet, a CVS file or a CSV file, but I prefer to typically just do this manually. So let me just pull up the BOM I've created for this design. So this, the BOM is gonna be read by a, a human. It doesn't have to be any specific format, but the main thing you wanna include is you wanna include the reference designator, you know, U1, R1, C3, those types of things. Uh, we're going to include the quantity of each of these parts. Most of them are going to be one, but for instance, we have four of these exact same capacitors, 0.1 microfarad. And then, of course, you're going to need the, the part number for being able to order all these components. Then for any of the passives, it's also good to include the value. And then also uh, the footprint. Most of these components are 0603, but you know some of these, like this ESD, is a UDFN10. And then also sometimes it can be good to include the supplier where, where you're planning on purchasing these parts from. Unless the manufacturer, you typically have an option, you can either order the components and ship to the manufacturer, or they can do it themselves from their own supplier. And that is all there is to a BOM. So what you end up with is in one directory, you should have a BOM, you should have a whole bunch of Gerber files. We don't need this Gerber job file. I'm just going to delete that. Uh, you'll end up most likely two drill files for plated and non-plated holes, and then two position files for top and bottom. And now what we want to do, the final step is we're going to zip all of these up into one file because that's how most manufacturers prefer to get it. And there we go. There is our zip file and that's all there is to it. So this is what you would send to the manufacturer to manufacture the boards and also assemble them. In this video, I've strictly focused on showing you how to output all of these manufacturing files using KiCad. However, the next step is, the, is how to order the boards from the manufacturer. So in the next video, which is likely published by the time you see this, I'm going to show you how to order boards with a popular PCB manufacturer.